What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Red Cup Review. I'm Rob Banks and today we're looking at the Mezco Invincible Iron Man figure. The box isn't as beefy as the Popeye one though. It's, it's you know, kind of like the older boxes, but there's the front, there's the back. And we're going to get into the review in a second, but what I want to I talk to you guys about real quick is this page called the Collector Zone Cantina on Facebook. So go to the Collector Zone Cantina on Facebook, and they own deal in the top companies for collectibles. So you're looking at Sideshow Collectibles and all the things that, that are carried on that site. Mezco, NECA, Funko, QMX, and Loungefly, which is apparently an apparel uh, a company li linked to ne uh, Funko. So go check out the Collector Zone on Facebook. That's Collector Zone Cantina on Facebook for all your action figure needs. Let's get to the review. This Tony Stark suit is straight out of Secret Wars, right? For those of you older collectors, remember those Secret Wars toys we grew up with back in the early 80s? This is pretty much the 2018 version of that. And this is the Iron Man that I grew up with and was my favorite armor up until the new movie suits came out and kind of redefined them for the newer generation. But here we're gonna take a look at the face sculpt. So let's bring them in nice and close. Nice metallic sheen on the face. I love the way the light bounces off of it. I got the light specifically po you know, posed right at the figure so you can see how the, the figure catches the light right on his face mask. And what you do is you take your two fingers and you just kind of pinch. And you, you don't really even pinch. You just kind of slip it off, right? It's got a magnet in there. There you go. There's a little sticker on the inside. So in case you want to have him holding his or have it like on his desk or something or whatever you plan to do. You can have that little sticker on the inside. And here is his face. Nice up close look at the face. He's got some really nice um, detailing on the face. I want to maneuver the light a little bit so we get a little bit more. You can see uh, the paintwork on the face is excellent. His eyes are bright blue. So let's get a nice, there we go. Get a nice bright blue on the eye. Well, a dark blue, but when the light hits, then they're really light. And he's got a gray mustache. It's old Tony. What's going on there, old Tony? I wouldn't ever have him like this, though. But if, in case you wanted to have him with his visor up, you just kind of plop it right on there, and it stays absolutely nicely. So there you go. Iron Man with the face plate up. Come on, fella. There you go. And I think he, and you can just kind of slide it around to however you need it to be. I think it looks really nice with it. And then you want to slide it back on, just kind of, because it's on a magnet, it's not just going to fall right off his face. So, boom, and then right back on. All right, isn't that cool? There he is, the classic Invincible Iron Man. And over in this section, we're going to be talking about the articulation and the die cast parts. Or die cast parts. Can't ever, I, I got to get together in these videos. All right, where's the die cast on this figure? You know what's great? The way the paint works, you really can't tell when it's just sitting there. You kind of can, because obviously this is the die cast. See how that's, but you can feel it's cold. It's got that cold feel, right? So this right here is die cast. The hands aren't. So you got to be careful here because I'll tell you, I'll get to that in a second. Plastic up in here. Uh, this is die cast all back here. The back piece, this is die cast as well. This isn't. The uh, crotch piece, I believe, is part of this piece, so it's all die cast. This down here is not. This part is all die cast. So you have the cuff, the actual boot extender, and then the boot itself is not die cast, I don't think. Well, it might be. You know what? I'm going to have to put my lips to it and find out. Yeah, no, that's die cast. So this whole thing here is die cast. Pretty much all the red, except for the hands. The uh, back of the head, the whole head is plastic, and the neck piece is die cast as well. So let's get into the articulations. Full joint there, double jointed elbows. They go up just about like that before running interference with the bicep. Uh, there's a little bit of, oh, uh, it, right here. And then you got the rotating wrist. This poses as well. This goes back and forth. This slides. See, watch, look. It slides back and forth. That's important. That's going to come in handy in a second. Okay, he has very, very, very limited waist articulation. See how that's kind of just barely moving? And there's a reason for that, probably because of the electronics that run up through here. He can crouch down about that much. He can he really gets nice lean going on in the back there. Okay, and his side to side is very slight. Oh no, he's got some actually pretty decent side to side motion going on there. He's got a double neck thing going on. He's got the ball joint on the head, right? But then he's got another joint down here. Watch. See how that's moving too? So you can really get him into some kind of like you can have his head like kind of leaning, looking down, looking this way, right? Take a look at that. So the neck articulation is great. This is kind of on its own thing, so you can position the belt however you want it. 
joint up in here, but be careful that you're not going to rub uh, the paint off of the, uh, the the crotch piece here as it spins, because you can see, see that right there? Okay, so be careful for that. Double jointed knees go up about that high. Then you got uh, this since this is die cast. You see how this rot See how this little this little half moon circle thing going on here. So he has rocker ankles. See how the ankles ankles rocking. The ankles are rocking. The ankle can rock and rock well, but you can't just it can rock well. Uh, you can't just this this whole friggin' thing is full of puns. This this there's gonna be mad puns th today. Uh, so you gotta be careful when when doing it side to side. You can get side to side, but you gotta kind of maneuver around and also at the cuff here. This rotates as well. So it's got a ton, ton of articulation on this fella right here. Why is the wrist important? The wrist part is super important because of this. Take a look at how, see how there, it's like kind of flat here, and then it goes up, and then kind of comes around. So when you want to pose him in his classic hand back, the hand is only going to go so far back, right? Aha, what you do is you rotate this down a little bit, and then the hand goes all the way back. All right, so you see how it's kind of like, like like here and then it like raises up a little so rotate this don't just say he can't put his hand all the way back he can you just have to work with it a little bit and be very patient remember these are adult toys folks they're not plastic pieces of you know what instructions instructions make sure you see this inside of your pack it comes with instructions and how to disassemble reassemble face plates the light up arc reactor and all that other good stuff how the stuff plugs in and everything else very nice good inclusion mezco big thumbs up here's all the accessories that come with iron man you got a bunch of different hands you got two wrist rockets you got two hip rockets over there the base in the back those are his hand cannons in the foreground there's his chest cannon in the back a little phallic for my taste did him tss. And you got four different versions of his booster rockets. Now we're going to show you how each of them attach to his body and how they look when equipped. First up, we got the wrist rockets. All right, wrist rockets have a nice little translucent look going on between the red or slightly orange to the yellow where it's kind of jettisoning out of his forearm there. And you got a nice little silvery rocket right there on the front. And it looks pretty nice, and it kind of stays head-on, too. So if you had him pointing it right at the guy, it's pretty much pointing right at him. All right, and it tabs in on the top right there. Here's a shot of the Plasma Blast, and like I said, he's got two of them. And I want to do a focus on the translucent and see how it goes from clear right here, and it gets darker as it comes out of the wrist. And you see these little points right here? Those points are very sharp, so be careful. Watch your little digits. And they plug in like so. They come out pretty easily, right? They plug in very easy, boop, but they don't fall out. So there you go, not gonna fall out. And you can put them in both hands for crowd control if you so like. You guys remember Chubbs, right? Well, it's all in the hips. So take a look at his little hip rockets there. I love how they got the, you know, all this little blast there, translucent. And they got some reds and oranges and, you know, no greens, no purples. This isn't Lucky Charms. But it is all on the hips, so how do these go on? You kind of just snuggle these off. But be careful, you don't want to rub the paint off with your nail there. So you just kind of slide it off, see that? And then it tabs in here, see the tab? But what you're going to have to do is when you line it up, like I did, you're going to have to squeeze it on there, get on there and really squeeze that shit on. No, I'm just kidding. But it does take a little bit of a, wor a little bit of work. There we go, see? Perfect. Now he's got them on both sides. So... You know, take your time with these folks. These aren't, these aren't Mattel toys. All right, we're going to combine the light-up feature and the Unibeam uh, all in one here for time's sake, so I don't take up too much of your time here, right? So you got the backpack, right? You just kind of get your nail again under there and just kind of pop that back plate off, but don't yank it off because, look, see how it tabs in? It slides in and then down, all right? Out, in, down, out, in, down, right? And then you got his little light-up feature, right? So you click the light on after you use one of those, uh, you know, those little, they come with the batteries, you know, the little earplug batteries there, but get yourself one of those eyeglass screwdrivers because it's really tiny. And then, bam, look at that. That thing shines like a mofo. Let me tell you, this thing will blind you if you stare straight in it. It's kind of like a cell phone light on an iPhone. So it's really dynamite, works great. How do you take this front plate off though, right? You see that little thing down there? I don't even know how the hell to do this myself. It took me a minute. Get your finger under there again and just slide it off, right? You see that? Slide that off. There's the light. And then you kind of see how there's like little tabs on there, right? You kind of just plug it in, right, like so. And 
He's got his li nice little phallic symbol coming right out of his chest there. Look at that. And it lights up nice, too. So you actually see the light coming. It doesn't go all the way through the front of the plastic, but it definitely goes up through all the rungs, which is very nice. I personally hate light-up features. I can't stand this shit. I wish they would just paint it to make it look like it's always on. Because why the hell would Iron Man ever have... Ever not have his stuff on. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. There you go. And then when you shut it off... Slide it up or off, right? Boop. See? There you go. Even when the light shines on it, though, kind of... It still looks like it's it's on. And you take the bad boy off. It just kind of comes right off. And then you can put the other thing right back on again. Remember to put it on the right way. And there you go. It's all on. There's his feet thrusters. He's got his thrusters. Look at that. He looks excellent. Excellent! When he's all posed up with his feet thrusters coming out of the bottoms. I really like the idea that they put two of them in. The two of them is excellent choice because it just... I mean, what else are you going to give this guy besides his, you know, trademark signature blast and everything else? So you got the foot pegs where you would normally peg into the base down here. You have two foot pegs underneath, right? So you got two on one and two on the other. And pretty much, there you have it. It looks excellent. And I just want to apologize if I'm like such a hater on the uh, the light up features. I know I got lambasted for that during my last videos because guys are like, oh, photography and all that other nonsense. Yeah, I get it. All right, photography. We, we got gotcha. you. It's just that when I have Iron Man in my cabinet, I want him always lit up and ready to go. So it's more of a personal thing. All right, I'm just going to focus on one of the hands here for the sake of showing you guys the hands off. So they got the nice little metallic paint going on in there. I thought they could have used a little bit more black wash in between the fingers and the joints and stuff to really make the joints pop out. I guess they did, excuse me, kind of right here where my nail is rubbing. There's a little bit down there, and the paint is not bleeding. It's all, you know, nice and works silky smooth, right? But I just wish there was a little bit more wash underneath. But I guess the way you pose it will kind of give it that... Uh, you know, the shadowing effect and stuff like that. So, they're pretty pretty basic hands. Height comparison time. This is him next to the Captain America, obviously. And Tony is just about, I want to say, 25% of a head taller than Cap. If you could see that. And Tony clocks in at approximately... Brrr, six and three quarter stars. There you go. Six and three quarter inches is how big Iron Man is. Here's a quick little word of warning. You guys like your die cast parts? Well, they're going to come with a little bit of a price. I would never have him posed with anything other than the waist grabber. I would not just have him standing up. Because the figure is at least a pound, it's going to put a lot of pressure on these ankle joints here. Now, the ankle joints are very stiff and nice and sturdy. But over time, if you guys have him in a dynamic pose, he is going to start to lean. And eventually, you'll have a figure with floppy ankles. So in order to redistribute the weight, so the weight of the figure a little bit, make sure you use that waist grabber unless you're going to have him in a museum pose. Other than that, please be careful, fellas. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I want to remind you guys as I put him up next to the Secret Wars poster to tune in every Saturday night to the Red Cup Review Live Week in Pop Culture Review at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I told you guys, right? Right out of Secret Wars. This is the Alex Ross version. Obviously, Mike Zek was the original artist of the cover of Secret Wars, but you get that Secret Wars... Uh, feel perfect uh, uh, Iron Man iteration there. Look at it. Absolutely great. How many cups will we give an Iron Man? Uh, I'm going to give him four and a half cups because he doesn't quite have the same pop that Popeye did and really shock value, but he's awesome. He's heavy. You can get him in some really dynamite posters, but please take care of all the stuff that I warned you guys about earlier. And remember to like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends about us, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. There's really not much else more I could say, all right? We'll see you around.